You can see Denmark's ubiquitous windmills however you arrive there, by air, land, or sea. Today we have 30% of all our electricity stemming from renewables, primarily wind and biomass. On the streets of Copenhagen, the Danes' commitment to living and working more sustainably has become part of their national culture. As, in, as most other Copenhageners, I use my bicycle uh, every day to go back and forth to the town hall. To accelerate the transition to more sustainable electric vehicles, the government has suspended its painful new car tax on EVs, which can be as high as 180% for some carbon-burning cars. We had a very tough wake-up call back in 1973, when actually we had a crisis, an oil crisis. At that time, we were 99% dependent on imported fossil fuels. So it turned so bad that people were prohibited to drive their private cars on Sundays. Now, as Denmark's Minister of Climate and Energy, Connie Hedegaard will be chairing the COP15 climate change debates. She's hoping Denmark's success in reducing its carbon emissions will translate to the rest of the world. We have had a growth rate of almost 80% in our economy since 1980 in Denmark. At the same time, we have managed to keep our energy consumption almost stable. While the rest of the world comes to COP15 to learn how to reduce its carbon footprint, the people of this small Danish island called Samso already have. In the past 10 years, they've gone to 100% renewable energy and have reduced their carbon footprint by 147%. We want people to continue to consume energy, but they should be aware of where the energy comes from. For the past 10 years, Soren Hermansen has turned his agricultural community on Samso Island into an energy experiment for the rest of the country. It is now the talk of the sustainability world. Well, the real convincing aspect was that you could actually save money. The climate or the environmental impact was just kind of a positive side effect of it. Land-based windmills take care of all of SAMHSA's local energy needs. Their community investment in offshore windmills allows them to sell energy back to the mainland to offset the island's transport costs, which still depend on oil. It's not just pure theory. It is doable in practical life. It's not that difficult. Most of the solutions that we need, they are there already. And if you use them, you can save money. Copenhagen's mayor, Klaus Bondum, is building more bike lanes and bridges and plan to convert the city's fleet of cars to all electric vehicles as part of Copenhagen's master plan to become the world's eco-metropolis by 2015. It's in our nerves or in our genes that we have an understanding that you can actually harm your surroundings if you don't uh, think about what you're doing. Denmark is launching one of the first nationwide electric vehicle networks. The first public charge spots are being installed at the COP15 climate change conference site. Delegates and visitors will also be able to rent EVs by the hour or the day at charging locations throughout the city. Secondly, we provide uh, free parking for electric cars. I bought my first electric car in 2005. Two months later, I bought another one for my wife. <laughs> Peter Christensen and his wife are part of a European Union feasibility study on the practicality of making the switch to EVs. Don't have to uh, to care about uh, gear. It's only forwards and backwards. It's very easy. In addition to buying EVs, the Christensen family has a 10-year government-backed mortgage on their own one megawatt windmill for powering their cars, all of their other household needs, and to sell power back to their utility company. It's making money, money. <laughs> so in order to accommodate a, a bigger proportion of wind production, we must find a storage uh, for the electricity to level it out. If we store the unstable wind energy in batteries, why not put four wheels underneath the battery and then you have the electric car. Closing the loop on renewable energy and electric vehicles is the holy grail of sustainable transportation. Dong Energy, the country's largest energy company, is partnering with Better Place, a global electric vehicle services provider, on a nationwide electric vehicle network of charge spots and battery switching stations to further reduce Denmark's auto and small truck emissions, the fastest growing source of carbon in the atmosphere. In Denmark, we have a population that's very focused on the environment. We have a lot of wind and therefore the ability to generate renewable energy. 
One of the things we can do is actually to be an example country and in Copenhagen be an example city for other countries and cities how sustainability can actually walk hand in hand with the financial and, and, and economic growth. In Copenhagen, this is Mike Saray reporting for Globe TV.